Welcome to the latest Friendly Neighborhood Spider Pal. This time, Amazing Spider Man number three. Um, Stan Lee continues um, showing us what a creative genius he was by introducing yet another villain that still plagues Spider Man. In fact, this was the very same villain who ended um, the volume two run of Spider Man, and that's Dr. Octopus. Um, interestingly enough, um, <coughs> continuing a trend that uh, was very in vogue at the time, um, but would be very people would be very adverse to it now because of our spoiler adverse um, culture. Uh, but in the first page, um, they advertise, "Hey, Doctor Octopus, the only villain to ever defeat Spider-Man." And so, rather than be upset that there's spoilers, you're wondering, "Okay, how does this guy defeat Spider-Man?" Um, he's only been in uh, this is only a third issue, and he was in Amazing Fantasy 15, so this is the fourth issue. So far, he's been completely victorious um, every time he's tried. You know, uh, yes, uh, someone killed Uncle Ben, but he let that guy go on purpose. Uh, so, um, really, the the only real um, 60s-ish thing that wouldn't really work today, uh, or is kind of weird today, is that he, in this issue, he has on his belt a little Spider-Man symbol that he flashes on the wall, kind of to freak out the criminals, or to let the cops know that he's the one who um, apprehended a guy. Um, very cheesy. I doubt it would happen much today. Back then it was probably a reference to something a lot of other superheroes were doing. So, um, as, as you saw in um, either the description on YouTube or on the Comic Pal page, um, last time I forgot to mention that what's interesting so far about all of Spider-Man's villains is that Spider-Man is a teenager. He's a high school kid. Sure, he's very intelligent. Sure, St the way Steve Ditko draws him, he looks like an adult and not so much like a kid, although that's partly due to 1960s um, fashion, you know, especially nerd fashion. But, um, yeah, he's just a kid. He's in high school. And yet, all of his enemies so far are grown men. Vulture uh, in, is on the extreme end, being an extremely old man, but, um, you know, even... Even here, you know, Otto Octavius, he's the leading um, guy who works with um, atomic experimentation. Um, you don't normally get that when you're, you know, a uh, young age. That's usually something that comes with time uh, and expertise. So, um, basically, the funny thing or the, the another thing that's a great, you know, storytelling uh, trope, you knew what was going to happen right away, is Spider-Man is thinking, man, man, I can defeat every, every villain. I've, I'm, I'm so awesome. I wish I'd have a villain that would challenge me, you know, right away. Plus from what they said on the first page that Dr. Octopus is going to be that guy. So we go to Dr. Octopus's origin. Um, I would say this one is not so sixties because they were able to update it in, um, the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies by having it be atomic fusion instead of fission. Basically he's working with um, radiation stuff, so he develops these arms to allow him to work with it without getting radiation poisoning. Um, there's an explosion, and the radiation fuses the arms to Dr. Octopus. Uh, one thing that I think is um, a rather interesting now is that of the enemies you've seen so far, um, the chameleon, um, the vulture, and um, the tinker, this is the first one who, like Parker, has his powers because of radiation. Now, yes, this was a very big trope in the 60s, but so far this is the first one that they're both they're both affected by radiation. Um, and so one other thing that's a bit 60s about it is that they have to mention that his brain was damaged by the radiation and that's why he becomes a villain. Um, I would say that's a very 50s and 60s way of thinking, um, you know, there's no way that someone who's a pillar of research could become a villain unless something happened to his brain during this attack. Um, and so um, Spider-Man gets his wish. Uh, when he tries to fight him, he's defeated. And he gets so depressed that he gives up. He's like, you know what? Forget it. I'm not going to be Spider-Man anymore. Which it seems kind of soon for him to give up like that, after, especially after being so cocky. But never fear. Uh, for inexplicable reasons, 
um, Johnny Storm, who was sent by the Fantastic Four to um, to fight Doctor Octopus, uh, for his powers don't work because he used them too much. Um, something I don't think is still canon, but anyway. Um, so because he can't defeat him, for inexplicable reasons, he's at a high school assembly talking to the kids there. And um, he basically tell, you know, says, hey, we've been defeated before. And then Spidey says, well, if the Fantastic Four has been defeated, then I don't feel so bad. And he decides to continue on his fight to defeat um, Dr. Octopus. And uh, what's, what's fun about this fight compared to the, the previous ones is that here are two um, very intelligent people um, essentially playing chess. Now, it's not as sophisticated as it would be nowadays. Nowadays, this would probably be at least two issues, if not three or four. It's, it's one issue, although they do make a big deal out of that. They're like, wow, this it, this story takes up the whole issue instead of having two or three stories. Um, but but they do kind of go back and forth. Okay, you know, Dr. Octopus has more arms than Spidey, so what's Spidey going to do? So... Spidey decides, okay, I'm going to shoot webs at him, and that doesn't work, and he decides to fuse them, and that's not perfect. So, um, of course, um, Stan Lee, a lover of, um, you know, jokes and irony and, and those type of things, has Spider-Man defeat, um, defeat Dr. Octopus with a, with a right cross. Boom, knocks him out. He's gone. Um, and so that kind of sums up the, the plot in general. Um, I think, you know, it's... We get some pretty interesting themes. We get um, the first time that, that Spider-Man considers quitting. You know, later there's the famous um, cover where he's throwing away his suit because he's given up. Um, he's He uh, doesn't get pictures for J. Jonah Jameson this time, but it doesn't matter because we learned last time he got enough, paid enough with his Vulture pictures to um, pay off the landlord for the whole year. Um, but you know we're we're starting to see an escalation it's it's you know we those of us who you know talk about comics a lot we're always talking about how does does the existence of batman cause the existence of joker and all the other supervillains and you know you could say does the existence of spider-man cause the existence of dr octopus um and clearly no in fact most marvel supervillains something happened to them but um but we do see spidey wishing for greater villains to take on so i think that's an interesting take on it from the other side you know the superhero who wants something to do and in fact um in more recent times um lots and lots of people at image and um and some of the other indie uh comic book um, publishers have considered what does happen when superheroes get bored and what consequences does that have for society and whether there should be superheroes and vigilantes and so on and so forth. Um, so overall, um, very well paced and very interesting. And um, we don't get too much more added to Spider-Man, but we do get another villain that, like I said, he's the one who ends the comic, you know, um, um, and when he takes over Parker's body. Obviously now, recently, that's all been reversed, but uh, one of his greatest uh, villains. So, um, any comments? Uh, feel free to um, add them on YouTube or Comic Pal, wherever you happen to see this. And um, I definitely enjoy conversation. That's why I like to write. That's why I like to create these videos. So, um, I definitely welcome it. Thanks.